Not all horror franchises are created equal, and some are so perfectly crafted that they're just begging for a scary movie marathon. From slasher films to killer doll flicks to sci-fi series, here are the best scary movie franchises to binge watch. Certain horror franchises just burn through sequels at a ridiculous pace, churning out cookie-cutter films that all feel basically the same. But in the case of Halloween, this series went in a different direction. Having first started in 1978, the Halloween saga spans over four decades of storytelling, during which it's seen several different filmmakers and aesthetics. Meanwhile, Halloween 3 Season of the Witch even abandoned Michael Myers altogether in an attempt to turn the franchise into an anthology series. Watching all the Halloween movies will take you on a wild ride from John Carpenter's original take on Michael Myers to the self-referential tomfoolery of later entries like Halloween Resurrection, which co-starred Buster Rhymes. Consuming all movies in this franchise also inevitably means partaking in Rob Zombie's brutal reboot and David Gordon Green's recent reimagining of the series. Basically, trying to keep any track of any semblance of coherent mythology across these movies is a fool's errand. However, seeing so many radically different takes on the Halloween universe makes diving into this franchise a total treat. Freddy Krueger may haunt your nightmares, but for horror fans, the nightmare movies are the stuff dreams are made of. Starting with Wes Craven's iconic 1984 original Nightmare on Elm Street, the franchise took full advantage of the fact that most of these films take place in people's dreams, resulting in some truly amazing scares. The visual component became even more noticeable in later installments, which got more and more ridiculous in depicting how Krueger could kill in the domain of dreams. Welcome to Wonderland, Alice. Not every entry in this series is an instant classic, but the persistently unique kills and the sequels that embrace truly unusual plots made the franchise an expansive canvas worth diving into. And some fans of the Nightmare series might even enjoy the 2010 remake featuring Jackie L. Haley's chilling take on Freddy Krueger. When the first Evil Dead movie came out, it wasn't supposed to kick off a long-running franchise. It was just a low-budget horror movie by passionate newbie filmmaker Sam Raimi. But after it took off as a cult classic, this charmingly ramshackle horror movie spawned further films that took the series in different directions. Evil Dead 2 utilized the basic setup of the original, but amped up every aspect, making use of its bigger budget. It also added a whole lot of comedy to the horror. Later, Army of Darkness took just the Ash character for a largely standalone fantasy adventure involving the Middle Ages. This is my boomstick! Much later, 2013's The Evil Dead reimagined the basic concept of youngsters in an abandoned cabin and added a level of tangible and brutal reality to the proceedings. There isn't much consistency across the Evil Dead movies, but that's what makes the series so interesting. This is especially true in regards to the first three, in which you can watch Raimi growing with confidence as a filmmaker in real time. But if there's one consistency across these movies, it's the presence of great moments of gross-out horror. Binge-watching the Evil Dead series will doubtlessly satisfy all your cravings for unbashedly ridiculous horror cinema. When the Child's Play movie started, nobody involved could have imagined where the series would go. If you plan to watch all the Child's Play movies, though, buckle up because the trajectory of this series is a wild one. Watching them consecutively means viewers will start in the 1980s, before moving into 21st century installments like Seed of Chucky that took things into unexpected avenues. These later films saw the blood flowing, as well as the creative juices of Don Mancini, who wrote all of the Chucky flicks and directed the last three. Hi, are you my best buddy? <laughs> Binge watching just the first five Child's Play installments would make for a fantastically memorable experience. However, avid fans of the franchise could also throw in the two direct to video sequels overseen by Mancini, as well as experience an alternate version of Chucky through the surprisingly enjoyable 2019 Child's Play remake. Watching the series will take viewers on a roller coaster of different tones, filmmaking styles, and even incarnations of Chucky voiced by the legendary Brad Dorif and Mark Hamill, respectively. Sure, no one expected such a journey back when this killer doll first started carving up trouble. All of that unexpectedness, though, is a gain of horror movie binge-watchers everywhere. The Saw movies, like any torture horror series, will not be to everyone's taste. Some people enjoy watching the creative ways these movies keep coming up with for characters to writhe in agony, but for others, it's just not their cup of tea. If this is your go-to form of horror entertainment, though, then Saw is an ideal fit for a night of horror binge-watching. And in an unexpected move for a slew of micro-budget sequels, later Saw installments established a dense lore for this universe. 
Jigsaw was no longer just a killer, for example. By the end of Saw 3, he became a deceased mastermind who'd left behind convoluted ways to keep his legacy going. The details of this franchise only get more and more bizarre from there, as the Saw sequels constantly expand upon their mythos, even as recently as 2021's Spiral. Watching them all back to back can be the ideal way to pick up on all the pieces of connective tissue between individual entries, and the constant presence of new ways for Jigsaw and his protégés to kill people can keep the entertainment going. The Purge movies don't begin on the highest note. The original installment from 2013 is the least ambitious entry in the series, despite the presence of notable actors like Ethan Hawke. But the film proves successful enough to spawn a trio of follow-ups that have each gotten more confident than the last. Even better, they've all featured different lead actors. And for the most part, individual Purge movies have opted to focus on new characters. This inclination is expanded in the most recent installments to include focusing on very specific minority perspectives, such as black heroes in the first Purge and Latinx characters in the Forever Purge. The increasing variety and confidence in each subsequent Purge movie culminated in the franchise's best entry yet, The First Purge, which saw the series dive headfirst into enjoyably blunt political commentary. Absorbing these titles in a binge-watching fashion allows viewers to appreciate how this series has evolved from its inaugural entry as it adds new characters and begins to explore the titular night from the perspective of various marginalized groups. Plus, watching these films in release order allows your binge-watch to cap off on a high note. Just grit your teeth through the original Purge, and this franchise can make for a mighty fine horror marathon. There's no masked killer wandering through the various Final Destination movies. The antagonist here is just the presence of death itself. Death doesn't like to be cheated, and each Final Destination movie sees death managing to find creative ways to kill its young victims. The five entries in this franchise have gotten varying degrees of reception from critics and audiences, but none of them were short on imaginative ways of ending the lives of their principal characters. The fact that each new movie keeps bringing in a new crop of characters to kill off helps lend a sense of distinctiveness to each entry. Similarly, the lack of a personified presence for death across multiple features means that the villain of the Final Destination films never loses its sense of menace. This is in sharp contrast to other horror foes like Jason Voorhees, who stick around for multiple movies and end up becoming punchlines. I can beat you. The Conjuring franchise is one of the few consistently successful cinematic universes without a Marvel Studios logo attached to it. Starting in 2013 with The Conjuring, the series has gone on to spawn not just two direct follow-ups, but also a trio of Annabelle spin-offs, as well as further offshoots with The Nun and The Curse of La Llorona. Though the spin-offs largely work as standalone movies, they do find ways of connecting or referring to the main Conjuring titles, such as the ending of The Nun, which reveals how one of the film's characters influenced the very existence of the original Conjuring. Fully appreciating these kinds of connections is one of several rewards you can glean from digesting the various Conjuring installments in a binging mode. Another upside is examining what different directors bring to this franchise. The playful nature of David F. Sandberg's Annabelle creation, for example, is starkly different from the haunted house vibes of James Wan's first two Conjuring movies. Though they all occupy the same space, there are different atmospheres and even time periods explored in the various Conjuring titles, giving us one of the rare cinematic universes to thrive at the box office. The world of international horror is vast and dense with phenomenal titles. However, if you're specifically in the mood for a series of long-running, foreign-language horror films to binge-watch, one of your best options is the Juon series. The inspiration behind the American Crudge franchise, the original Japanese series has got you covered when it comes to incredibly creepy films. For example, if you're in the mood for only a quartet of films, you can simply partake in the original series of Juon films that ended with the pair of 2009 features Black Ghost and White Ghost. However, there are plenty of other installments in this franchise if you're craving more Juon frights. If you want to be a completist, though, you'll also have to include the crossover event movie Juon vs. Ringo, which brings together the demonic entities from the original Grudge and Ring movies. No franchise that gets to six installments, or eight if you want to count the Alien vs. Predator crossover features, can deliver classic movies all of the time. However, this series still delivered two stone-cold masterpieces with its first two films, Alien and Aliens. Across these two entries, the most beloved staples of the franchise were established, while also showing a refreshing refusal to just repeat the past. While Alien is a darker horror movie, Aliens is a rollicking action-adventure. 
That particular quality can be chalked up to the different directors for each movie, with Ridley Scott helming the first Alien and James Cameron directing the sequel. After Aliens, the quality gets a lot less consistent. But that doesn't mean the rest of the franchise is devoid of merit. For one thing, it's fascinating to watch how Ridley Scott's 21st century Alien movies like Prometheus compare to his very first title. For another, divisive features like Alien 3 may not be universally loved, but they could be up your alley. That's the joy of binge-watching a series like Alien. Not every film will be your favorite, but you could find an unexpected gem within the franchise. With Night of the Living Dead in 1967, George A. Romero forever altered zombies. Slow walking undead figures that devour human flesh are commonplace in pop culture today, but Romero defined our modern conception of these beasts with a single film. This accomplishment alone makes his original Night of the Living Dead a landmark horror film. But Romero didn't stop there. He created a slew of sequels that provide the perfect basis for a frightening round of binge watching. While many horror sequels to famous films are low-grade cash grabs, several of the Night of the Living Dead follow-ups are acclaimed movies in their own right, particularly the 1978 installment Dawn of the Dead. Not only does watching this series provide you with plenty of beloved zombie fare, but it's also intriguing to take in the unique qualities of each entry. Since Romero made most of the movies in different decades, many of the films have a unique ambience that reflects the atmosphere of horror cinema in that era. For example, 2007's Diary of the Dead was the first in a resurgent wave of found footage movies in the late 2000s, a sharp contrast to the more conventional filming techniques in the original Night of the Living Dead. Romero's zombie films gave fans as much food for thought as it does graphic zombie kills, and that makes them perfect movie night material. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.